If you want the best sounding car audio experience, running Active offers many benefits. But what does this even mean? What are the advantages of running Active? How do we run Active? And what are some potential mistakes that we need to avoid? Hey everybody, I'm Mark. Welcome to Car Audio Fabrication. Here on this channel, we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install our dream car audio system. Let's get on into it. So first off, what does running Active even mean? Well, even if you were new to car audio, you likely understand that speakers come in many different sizes. We have subwoofers, woofers, we have mids, and we have tweeters and even other sizes in between. The reason for all these different size drivers is they excel at playing different ranges of frequencies. As an example, subwoofers excel at playing low frequency bass due to their large size that can move large volumes of air. In contrast, a tweeter is very small and horrible at making bass. But a tweeter is great at playing high frequency information since high frequency sounds require short wavelengths that vibrate thousands of times per second. A small and light speaker cone with minimal inertia is great for this to produce a clean, accurate high-end sound. Now to make each of our speakers play only the frequencies that they excel at, we need to use filters. On a subwoofer, we use a low pass filter. In other words, we're only sending frequencies below a certain point. As an example, 80 hertz and below. With a tweeter, we use a high pass filter. In other words, we're allowing frequencies above a certain point. As an example, 5,000 hertz on up. Now for mids and woofers, we oftentimes use both filters, both a high pass and a low pass, in order to have a certain range of frequencies in between. Now we need something to put all of these different filters in place before the signal gets to the speaker, and we often do that with a crossover network. Now this right here is considered a passive crossover network, and that means it doesn't have any external power supply. The way this passive crossover network works is you have one channel of signal coming in. In other words, one speaker channel, you have positive and negative. Typically that signal coming in is going to be a full range signal, which means it has low frequencies on up to high frequencies. What the passive crossover network here does is it then divides that single channel of input into three different outputs, which have a limited range of frequencies depending on the driver, the speaker that is connected to each. I know that sometimes there's some confusion on this. I wanna make it super clear to you guys. This literally means that you're going to have a positive and negative speaker wire connected to either your amplifier or your aftermarket head unit, whatever is powering your system. And then you're going to have three more sets of speaker wires. So each with a positive and negative. One is going to go straight to the tweeter. One is going to go straight to the mid range and one is going to go straight to the woofer. In this case, because this is a three way passive crossover. If this was a two way passive crossover we would have one less set of connections here and usually you're going to see a tweeter connection and a mid slash woofer connection so finally now that you understand all of that to understand what running active means it means we simply aren't using this and instead in order to control the range of frequencies of information that is sent to each of our speaker drivers it's done either with the amplifier or with a digital signal processor or even our aftermarket head unit the whole point is is it's done with something else upstream of the speakers and we don't use the passive crossover so in our example here rather than having one channel going into this and being broken out to three we are no longer using that and we have three unique channels that are going directly to each of the drivers and of course for a system like this you're going to want a left and right set so technically you're going to need to have six channels of information in order to power this active three-way set so now that we know that running active means what are the advantages we're gonna to get to that in just a second but a quick thank you to our channel sponsor Focal America the speakers I've been using as an example so far in this video are the K2 Power Series and if you are looking for speakers that have an extremely detailed sound even at the most substantial of output levels these are definitely what you want. Available in several different sizes including a unique six and a half inch shallow woofer option for those limited mounting depth applications these feature an aramid fiber cone that allows the drivers to be highly dynamic and precise. Personally these are one of my favorite speaker lines of all time we use these in my Grand Cherokee build that I did a while ago here on the channel if you guys would like to learn more check out the links down in the video description so like we were talking about what are the advantages of ditching the passive crossover and running active 
First off, better sound quality. As you can imagine, these passive crossover networks do eat up a little bit of the power that is going to the speaker. By not having these in line, you're going to have all of that power going directly to your speaker. An even bigger advantage though comes from when you are using a digital signal processor as part of your system, you can now control time alignment or time delay at each of the speakers. Let's dive a little bit deeper into that. Let's say that we are using the passive crossover, which by the way, you can still use a digital signal processor with a system that has a passive crossover. It's not like you can only do one or the other. You can combine a system with the two things. And I have a video all about that here in the corner of the screen. If you have a passive crossover as part of your system, like I said before, you only have that one channel of input, which is then divided out into the two or three channels of information for your speakers. A digital signal processor is going to be upstream of this. You would never have anything connected between this and the speakers. So what that means is we could only use the DSP to control that one channel before it gets into this. That means if we're adjusting our time alignment in the digital signal processor, we can only do it for this as a full system. In contrast, if we aren't using this, if we have a channel going to each of our speakers. What that means is we can now control the time alignment to each of these individually. This is very advantageous because it's common that if you're installing a three-way or a two-way component system, these speakers are going to be in different locations in the vehicle. You might have a tweeter up high, you might have a mid in the door, and you might have a woofer down low in the door. By being able to control time alignment to each of these drivers individually, we can make sure that all of the sound arrives at our listening position in phase all at once, and we can control time alignment to each of these. Now, another reason running active is advantageous is we can control the actual crossover points. As you can imagine with a passive crossover network like this, we're locked into exactly what filter frequencies are being used. And we're also typically locked into the slope of those filters. With an active filter, even something as simple as the crossover control on your amplifier, you can often determine the exact filter frequency. And with a DSP and an aftermarket head unit, you can also oftentimes control the slope Hopes along with the different filter frequencies. There's just a lot more tuning flexibility there for you to use. Now, another advantage of running fully active is you have the ability with a digital signal processor to fully EQ each of these drivers individually. If we were using the passive crossover network, we can still use the equalization on a DSP upstream of this, but you're doing equalization for kind of the system as a whole. You definitely have a little bit more flexibility by being able to EQ each of these drivers individually. Now, how exactly do we run active and what are some mistakes that we need to avoid? In the past, I have got some emails and questions from you guys, so I just want to make sure that this is super clear. When you are running active, you are literally connecting the outputs of your amplifier directly to your speakers. I think a good way to help you guys understand is just to consider something that you're super familiar with, likely a subwoofer. A subwoofer has its speaker terminals connected directly to the amplifier, and you often control the crossovers on the amplifier or upstream of it in a DSP or in your aftermarket head unit, which means your subwoofer is being RAN active. Essentially now the same case with our speakers here, we are not using the passive crossover network. Instead, we are connecting directly to our amplifier with our positive and negative speaker wire, just like you always would. In our example here, this is a six channel amplifier. I only have three of the channels connected right now. So just the left side, obviously you would have six total. So two of each of these and those other speakers would land on these unused speaker terminals here. But what is super, super important here is remember, because you're getting rid of this crossover network, you now need to control the crossover frequencies, the filter frequencies elsewhere in the system. This is especially important for the tweeter. You wanna make sure that you're not sending any low frequency information to this, as you'll likely damage it extremely quickly. If you would like to see a full detailed video on how we choose our filter frequencies, be sure to check it out in the corner of the screen. 
So now some mistakes to avoid and considerations for when you are running active. First off, as you can imagine, running active is a little bit more advanced and complex than just using that passive crossover network. To get the best results, it's really important that you understand tuning and how to properly set up an amplifier and a digital signal processor, but luckily we have other videos here on the channel, of course, covering those topics. When running active, a consideration that you definitely want to account for is how it is a lot more likely that your tweeter can get damaged. It's rare, but it is possible for something like a digital signal processor to lose its settings and crossover points and unfortunately send low frequency information to a tweeter. It's also possible for a turn on pop or other noise to make its way to the tweeter. It's even possible that you could accidentally make a mistake when setting up the tuning of the system and send those low frequencies to the tweeter. For all of those reasons, I recommend having a tweeter protection capacitor in line with each of your tweeters. Again, I have a full video all about that here on the channel. Now, another really big consideration for running active is it's considerably more expensive. As an example, let's say that I'm running a three-way set of components in the front of the car, so a tweeter, a mid-range, and a woofer, and let's say that I'm running a two-way set of component speakers in the rear, so a tweeter and a woofer. If I'm using the passive crossovers for this system, I really only need four channels of amplified power for front left and right and rear left and right. So that means I can use a commonly available four-channel amplifier, but if we're running active, now I need six channels for up front and four for the rear, 10 channels of total amplified power. With this many amplifier channels, we oftentimes now need two amplifiers, or if you're doing a single amplifier, a 10 channel amplifier gets pretty pricey. Something else that can really drive that budget up is in my opinion, in order to get the best results with running active, you're going to want to get a digital signal processor that is also part of the system. Another thing that can drive up the needed budget is you're going to need a lot more speaker wire rather now than just running to this and distributing from here, you need to run a straight run all the way to each of the speakers. And something else you definitely wanna consider here is imagine that you're running a two-way component system in the door of your vehicle. Well, a lot of times if you're using the factory speaker wiring, which on a lot of today's vehicles, you kind of have to because the door Molex plug is so complicated, it's not very easy to run a new wire through it. That means you're only going to have one channel that is going back to the inside of the car for those two component speakers. The installation becomes a lot more challenging when you need to get two channels of information into each door, even potentially three channels if you are doing a three-way active component set in a door. So installation-wise, this can become a considerably larger time investment as well. So now that you have a better understanding of the basics of running active, I'd encourage you to dive into more detail on picking your crossover points and making sure that you have a protection capacitor for the tweeters. Again, more details in the related videos. For your next build, if you are looking for a set of speakers that are extremely detailed, even at high output levels, definitely check out the K2 Power Series from our sponsor, Focal America. Details down in the video description. A special thanks to them along with Jerry and the rest of the Patreon membership team for making these videos possible. And thank you guys so much for tuning in and watching.